Could gravity drive time forward? According to Nobel Prize winner Roger Penrose, it absolutely does. In 1979, he proposed his vial curvature hypothesis, and it's been hanging around ever since. It seems like time, gravity, and entropy are all inextricably linked, but no one seems to have figured out how. In physics, hypotheses are put forward to solve problems, and this hypothesis is no different. The problem is that, according to the second law of thermodynamics, entropy should always increase over time or stay the same. But data from the cosmic microwave background radiation seems to suggest that the early universe was nearly perfectly uniform. And that means that, neglecting gravity, it was at essentially maximal entropy. It seems like doing anything but stay exactly as it is would cause its entropy to decrease, violating the second law. And yet, the early universe did do something. It expanded. So Penrose suggested that the missing ingredient was gravitational entropy, the entropy inherent in the gravitational field itself. While little is known about precisely how to define the entropy of a gravitational field, Penrose noticed that a geometric quantity called the vial curvature seems to be higher in gravitational environments that look more disordered. In a very precise sense, space-time curvature can be broken up into two pieces, the part that comes from the presence of matter and the part that comes from space-time curvature at one point influencing the same at other nearby points. The latter is captured by the vial curvature, and it's precisely the vial curvature that captures things like gravitational waves, which are emitted in particularly messy gravitational systems like in spiraling black holes. So Penrose hypothesized, what if the vial curvature was zero in the early universe? Then, even though the matter part of the entropy might be at its maximum value, the total entropy wouldn't be because the gravitational field would have been astoundingly orderly. Then, as the universe evolves and structures form, the vial curvature, and thus the gravitational entropy, increases, ensuring that total entropy rises in accordance with the second law. In fact, it's often stated, although not quite proven, that the reason time flows the direction it does is because that's the direction in which entropy increases. Viewed this way, the second law of thermodynamics is tautological. Entropy definitionally increases as time marches forward. So if both of these ideas are true, that the entropy dictates the arrow of time and that the vial curvature was small in the early universe, then it would truly be the case that gravity, literally the curvature of spacetime itself, is the reason time began to flow at all. 